Hello everybody, Gator from Sharp. Excited to have you back with me for our fourth installment of our five favorite food tubers. In today's episode, we're talking about not another cooking show. If you're unfamiliar with this channel, uh, primarily he focuses on Italian recipes. He lived in Italy for a little while, is my understanding. Um, and I love his channel because it gives you lots of great ideas for uh, really great Italian recipes that you can make. Um, and of course, one of the staples of Italian cuisine is pasta. I love making fresh pasta at home. It's really, really easy. Um, um, I know it can seem uh, a little bit daunting and difficult to do, but once you do it a couple times, you'll realize it's just, just super easy. Uh, super rewarding as well. Fresh pasta is so delicious. Uh, so in today's video, we're going to be making a, a very simple like lemon and garlic um, uh, agnolotti with ricotta, parmesan cheese. Um, it's going to be delicious. First thing we need to do is make our dough though. So um, in my bowl here, I have nine eggs. I'm going to crack those all open. Uh, all we're gonna use is the yolk for our pa uh, pasta dough recipe. Uh, there are many recipes out there for pasta doughs. We'll link um, Not Another Cooking Show's video on pasta dough uh, down below in the description. Um, but this particular recipe has never let me down. So I'm gonna use this one today. Um, it involves, again, nine egg yolks, bread flour, some olive oil, and some water. So let's get into it. Okay, so I've got my nine egg yolks ready to go here. I'm gonna measure out 228 grams of bread flour. I'm going to get this right down on my table. So I get my flour down on, on the bench here. I'm gonna create a little well. I'm gonna add in my egg yolks. We're gonna slowly incorporate our flour into our egg yolk here. You can just kind of take stuff from the outside, sprinkle it on top. You don't have to be too precise with anything here. We just want to get our initial pasta dough sort of not too, too runny so it doesn't escape from us as we're trying to mix it in and incorporate all the flour here. So try to keep it together as best you can for as long as you can. It's inevitably going to break apart, no big deal. You'll notice I've got a bench scraper next to me here as well. That's going to be really, really helpful for making pasta dough. Yeah, so this is when the bench scraper is really going to come in handy here. It's going to really help us incorporate and hydrate our flour properly. So I want to get as much of that off as possible. Now we're just going to chop up our flour into our egg yolks. We haven't added any water at this point yet, but we will probably need a little water. It depends. Pasta is a little bit like bread making. Like it really depends on how humid it is outside. On drier days, you'll find you need more water. On humid days, you, find, you might find you don't need any water at all. While pasta making is easy, it definitely takes a little bit of practice to kind of get the feel for it. Cool, now the fun part, we get to start kneading our dough here. So we're gonna try to clump it together a little bit. It's gonna seem really dry at first, that's totally normal, nothing to worry about. One cool trick I learned from Not Another Cooking Show was how to add water to your dough as you're going. So you can tell this is quite dry and crumbly, so I definitely need some water in here. Now, you could of course just drizzle some water on here, but that's not gonna help us mix it in really evenly. So the trick I learned from Not Another Cooking Show is to just have a, have a source of water next to you, ideally just like your kitchen sink, and you're just gonna run your hands under the sink, and with your wet hands, you're gonna keep kneading really helps to just evenly incorporate the water. I'm definitely gonna need a little more here too. Remember, you can always add more, you can't take it away. So, little bits at a time. Try to use all that flour. I think it goes without saying, you wanna make sure you're working on a nice clean work surface here. Make sure your hands are nice and clean as well. Cool, so now we've, we're, getting, we're getting to what is starting to resemble a dough here, which is great. And you really can't knead pasta dough too much in my experience. 
the more we knead it, the more strength we're adding. So all I'm doing here is like little quarter turns and using my the heel of my hand to really get this kneaded in here. And as you can tell, like we're starting to come together here. This is great. So this should take some time here, guys. This is not a super quick process. Obviously you'll get faster at it, but most recipes I've come across call for at least like five to 10 minutes of kneading. You'll see it start to get like shinier and smoother. Okay, I'm looking really good here, guys. My dough looks really nice and, and uh, uniform. If I give it a little poke, it rebounds back up at me, so I know I'm good here. So I'm just gonna wrap this bad boy up, throw it in the fridge, let it rest for about an hour. Um, you can do this the day before as well, and that'll be even better. The longer you let this rest in the fridge, um, like up to about 24 hours, the better. So I'll get this popped in the fridge and then we'll come back and roll her out. All right guys, we got our dough in the fridge. It's time to make our filling. We're gonna make something very simple here today, just a plain old ricotta with Parmesan and lemon. Um, this is one of my favorite fillings for pasta. It's delicious, it's super easy to make. We are gonna go in with about 20 ounces of ricotta or just a big old tub that you get at your grocery store. I've got about uh, three ounces of Parmesan cheese here going in. I'm gonna do a little lemon zest as well. We want our filling to be uh, pretty bright and, and flavorful, obviously, so we don't wanna skimp on the lemon zest. We'll also go in with a little lemon juice also. Probably do a little more lemon jus. Salt and pepper. Don't need too much salt because we already got all that Parmesan cheese in there. We'll taste this at the end, obviously, and adjust our seasoning as necessary. Yes, very nice. Okay, so I got my filling done. I'm gonna get it into the, my piping bag here. Just gonna make it way easier to get it piped onto our pasta sheets. You don't wanna fill these bags up too much or else you won't be able to close them. Here we go, one ready to go. All right, filling made. Uh, you don't have the dough. Okay, we're ready to go. We got our filling made. Our dough's been resting for about an hour. It's time to roll it out and start making our little enyalatis. Cool, so we don't wanna work with like the whole thing. It's gonna be really tough to, to get this whole thing through the machine in one. We're gonna have this giant sheet of pasta. Um, it's gonna be really hard to work with. So we're gonna end up cutting this guy into quarters or, you know, close to quarters. It doesn't have to be exact. The dough we are not using, we're just gonna cover with some saran wrap so it doesn't dry out on us. All right. I'm gonna get some flour down, and we're just gonna roll this out and try to make it into as square or rectangular a shape as possible. So what you're gonna do is just roll it out like so first, and we're gonna do what's called a book fold. So we're gonna take, we're gonna, like you're folding a letter, so one third over top of one third, and you'll notice that's gonna help us make our nice rectangular shape here. 
These book folds also strengthen our dough as well, make it less prone to rippage. I'm gonna do one more. Obviously, you can use really anything as a rolling pin. I'm using this wonderful uh, ice syrup that the people over at Niagara College gifted to me a while back. All right, so our pasta machine here, we've got set up nicely secured to the table. We've got some flour over top of it. We don't want anything sticking as we go. Make sure you're set to the most uh, widest setting. So on this particular machine is, uh, happens to be the number zero. We're gonna go all the way up to the finest number, which on this machine is a nine, which actually might be a little too thin, but we'll see how we go here. This is Jake's machine, so I've never used this guy before. We'll see how things turn out here. Don't be afraid to get like a little extra flour on there as you're going. Again, we don't want this sticking or anything. I usually do through the, on the first number a few times. So that's three times through zero. Now we'll go through number one, number two, number three. Yeah. I, I find it is important to work relatively quickly. Like, you don't want your pasta drying out or anything on you. So you wanna work with a sense of urgency. You don't wanna rush yourself or anything, no. And don't be, again, don't be afraid to get some extra flour on there. It's all gonna come off in the cooking process anyways. So it's better to get a little extra flour on there rather than worrying about stuff getting stuck. And as you can see, just with the quarter of the, of the total dough we had, we're, we're, getting, we're getting a nice long sheet here. Now that I'm getting, I'm on number seven now. So now I wanna, I don't have to be too worried about things, but I wanna be cautious not to rip our dough. So we wanna work sort of cautiously at this point. And we're getting pretty good here. Generally, when you're making filled pasta, you want to, they say you want to be able to see your fingers through the dough, and we're pretty much there on number seven here, so I'm gonna say number eight is probably as far as we're gonna need to go here. We're getting pretty thin. That's quite thin, so that's as far as we need to go. We won't do the final one. Okay, folks, look at this nice long sheet. We're gonna work with one at a time here. I'm not gonna roll out the rest of my pasta until I've got this one done. So, so I'm gonna get rid of my machine here. I'm gonna get some flour down underneath my pasta sheet so I don't stick. Perfect. I always like to make sure they're sliding around nice so I know they're not gonna get stuck to the table. Now we're ready to do our filling here. So we've got our nice fat tip on our piping bag here. We're gonna go about like, I don't know, a finger and a half from the one edge here. And we're gonna pipe a nice log of cheese. Try to be as consistent as possible. Actually, I don't know if this is gonna get me all the way, but let's see. And 
know. That's all right, though. We'll just get rid of this. No big deal. Okay, now here comes the fun part. Making Enyalati. I can't remember the exact name of this. It's on plan or something like that. We're doing the folded kind. So what we're gonna do now, we need something to get our pasta to stick together nicely. So just a tiny little bit of water. We're gonna spritz. This guy's on the aggressive side. So we're just gonna spritz some water onto our pasta sheet here. We're gonna go from one side and we're gonna go up and over. Just like so. And then we're gonna crimp this down gently. You wanna like use a good amount of pressure here, but not so much that you're like mushing the dough at all. We want it to stay stuck together, of course. Okay, now we're just going to uh, pinch with our index finger and thumb and make these little pillowcases of deliciousness. I like to do mine, you know, about an inch in size here. Again, you wanna be working gently but forcefully at the same time. First time you do this, my first time did not go well, so don't get discouraged if, uh, if you screw up the first time. It's likely to happen, and you just need to practice. Now we're going to cut our excess off. And now we're gonna end up making our little angulatis. Hiya. All right, and there you have it, guys. Our beautiful little, little pillowcases of deliciousness. Those look great. They turned out awesome. I'm gonna get these on a plate, lightly floured, and then into the fridge. All right, guys, we're all set up to make our sauce and our final dish here. Pasta's still in the fridge, uh, chilling out, just setting up a little bit. We've got our salted water here boiling away. So I'm gonna get started with my sauce. This is a really simple sauce. Uh, it's gonna consist of butter, lemon juice, uh, garlic, lemon zest, and some pasta water, very, very important. The pasta water is gonna help to emulsify everything, kind of thicken our sauce up and make a, a really nice glossy coating to our pasta. When we're finished, we'll plate it, we'll grate some Parmesan cheese over top, uh, hit it with some salt and pepper, and uh, we'll be good to go. So, uh, first thing you're gonna go in is our butter. Garlic in next. We're just gonna gently cook this out. Oh, that smells amazing. So that's pretty much all I need to do at this point. I'm gonna get my water, I'm gonna get my pasta down in the water and then we'll finish off our sauce once the, uh, once the pasta's cooked. Okay, we're floating now. We've been floating for a little while, so we're probably ready to go. Remember, your filling does need to warm up here, so even though they're floating doesn't, tech, doesn't mean they're quite ready. So once they're floating, another minute or so, just so we make sure we get nice heat through the whole filling here. And now don't be afraid to get a little extra water in there. Again, that's gonna help make our sauce. We're gonna go in with our lemon juice. Keep her moving. We don't want our sauce to break on us. There we go, we'll get some of our lemon zest in there as well. Oh baby. Cool guys. Go into our nice bowl here. Oh, there we go, that looks great. A little salt and pepper on there. Yeah. 
And we're ready to eat here, folks. All right, guys, we're all finished here. I'm super excited to try this, so let's get into it. Mm. So good. Lots of lemony, cheesy, Parmesan-y goodness in there. Pasta's cooked perfectly. Oop. Sauce turned out really nice. Mm. So there you have it, guys. Uh, some of my favorite uh, tips and tricks from Not Another Cooking Show. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash the like button. And until the next one, stay sharp.